we actually answering this one right now? Wait, can we? I don't know. You'll find you never have to look too far. You don't have to cover up your scars. You're perfect, darling, just the way you are. So before you think to rip yourself apart, open up my heart and you'll find love. Hi guys, we're filming the Q and A. <laughs> yes, so, I do have a cold sore, and yes, I do take L lysine. Thank you for whoever sent it to me last. <laughs> Just to get that out of the way, you guys have had a ton of questions. We've had a lot of changes in our life, like yeah. the this past, past hey, who are you three guys? months. Um, what? These past couple months have been honestly the craziest, but funnest moments of my life at least. Yeah, that's so true. I feel like moving from a small town to a big city. I love the city, so this is You awesome. love it here? Okay, the that's city. the answer to the first question. <clears throat> he loves it here. I'm a city boy. <laughs> and just all the other stuff that we, Melinda's adoption's coming up. Um, just, yeah, we just, let's yeah. just start. <laughs> People in New York, Chicago. Or like, They're like, or like, I'm going to New York. <laughs> We're going to New York in a couple Woo weeks. Woo. Okay. Felicia King, I just want to say I love you and watch all of your videos y'all post. I love your family. You have a special place in my heart. How are the kids feeling about the move? What are the ups and downs moving with a big family? Okay, wait, real quick. We were going to film this as a big family Q&A, so we'll probably do a part two because there's so many questions. The girls but are the camping girls are now. camping right now with which some is, new friends. Which is interesting because the girls don't like to camp. They don't love camping. Hallie likes camping. A few Hallie, of the kids Hallie like does. camping, but they're with some new friends, and so they're having very fun. Okay, uh, how, was, how do you feel like the move went? I think it went a lot better than I thought because we were able to get everything done in one go instead of having to take multiple trips. Sorry, I have something in my eye. But So moving it, with a big family is not the funnest. Oh no. There was a lot of mattresses that took up a lot there of room. There were boxes, and heavy there were boxes, things. Just, but I feel like it went really smooth for how many people. When we all work yeah. together, it makes it easier. Yes, when we all like focused on one area and put boxes away even, it, it went like so that. fast. So It's funny, it's, the unload process took so much less time than the last Yes, oh, oh my gosh, like the unload was so Straight. fast, it was awesome. It always works like that. Melanie Marie Wallace, love your new house. Just want to know if the house was built new or was it remodeled? Wish I could meet you all. I would love to swim in your pool. So would my seven-year-old daughter. We would love for you to come swimming with us. The pool is so fun. It's so, it's fun. so fun. And um, it was, I think it was recently built. It was built brand new in 2008. 18. 2018. I was going to say, because I looked on the... <laughs> I was poking around on Google Maps and it was just like dirt in this area. But now it's built. Yeah. Sandy Ler O'Malley, now that Alex graduated, is there any plans for him to move out? If so, would he stay close to home? Uh, well, do y'all want me to leave? No, okay. never. We do not want him to leave. We don't we want, do him, to want him to move out. Him to move out. <laughs> but I do have to eventually. Alex being now an adult. He's adulting. He's adulting. Not eventually, really, kind of I have to. So, as far as I know, Spencer from the Crazy Middles is moving out in October. I think it's the current place. I don't know. He's uh, going back and forth because he's he going still wants back to and finish forth. his senior he year. He wants to finish his senior year, but at the same time, he wants to do it online and just come move in with me. So, we'll they want to have happens. a fun Eventually. bachelor pad. Eventually, him and Spencer will live together. It might be in a year, might be in a year and a half, might be in four months. So, we don't know Who at knows? this point. But we don't want Alex to move out. We want him to stay with us forever. Okay. What? <laughs> You love it. He's one of our best chore kids. <laughs> he is good at chores. <laughs> Janelle Hatchin, crazy pieces. My question is, if Jamie were to want to move in with you guys, would she be able to? I love Jamie. She seems like such a sweet spirit. I know Melinda takes great care of her. Just was wondering if living with you would be an option. Well, Janelle, thank you for that amazing question. So, uh, um, not like you were on a talk show, you know. Like, well, thank you, Janelle. Thank you. Anyway, <laughs> we're more mic. casual than that. So, thank you, Janelle. 
We appreciate your question, and uh, yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, so Jamie is always welcome at home. Um, we do consider this her home. She is adopted in our hearts. She's our daughter. Um, if you know, living with Melinda is just not working out, and she wants to move back, we can absolutely talk about that. Right now, we have a full house. We got so. plenty of space. We do have I'm plenty of space in our new yeah. house, we do. But she's really happy with Melinda and they're doing really great. But yes, like Aaron said, at any time in the future. If this guy moves out and we have space, you know, let's, let's, <laughs> let's talk about it. Hey, I'm not being replaced. I'm never, never, you can you're not never be replaced. <laughs> Lisa Johnson Underwood. Hello, crazy pieces. I'm loving the new house, especially the pool. I have two questions. Number one, all the kids seem so outgoing, but Jake seems so laid back or shy. Is he always like this? Yes. Yes. Yeah, Jake is just chill kid. Jake is just I like- I think Jake is literally our most chill child. <laughs> Jake I is so relaxed. He like, is. Like everyone in the house- <laughs> They're like, ah! Yeah, everyone Jake's in the house like, is gonna cool. be cra crazy. Jake's just laying on the couch like, you guys do. Cool. <laughs> like, all right. That's Jake's See? personality, right? Jake there. goes with the flow and loves doing things as together as a family and loves being a part of things, but he's chill while he's doing so it. He's so calm. It's like, okay. Yeah. He does have his outgoing moments. He has his crazy moments. He will have his, his, and his yes. Like, he there'll, does. there'll be random days where it's like he's on a sugar high and he's just do, 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 off the walls. Yeah. Okay, number two, this is for Hallie, Halo. I admire you seeking help for your mental health and you have such a great support system. What are you doing to keep your mental health positive? And besides seeking help, what are the, some of the things you do and suggest for others to do as I also struggle with my mental health along with physical health? Love you all. Okay, Lisa. Uh, she's not so here with us, Hallie, so it's hard to answer. Yeah, but. she's not here with us, but she did give me permission to share a couple of things with you guys, and hopefully she will be making a video very soon going in more in depth with everything. So we did get official diagnosis for her. Um, so, well, okay, when it comes to mental health, it is so important that you talk to somebody. And when you're starting something out and you're having a hard time or whatnot, find somebody that you trust. It could be a friend, a teacher, your mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, cousin, counselor, anybody, counselor. anybody, you just need to talk because you are not alone. There are so many people in this world struggling. So with Hallie struggling, especially over the last few months, we have looked into every resource, every program, every therapist, um, life coach, like you name it. We have looked into it. We are trying, or we have finally figured out a system or things that work um, for Hallie. But she just got a diagnosis the other day from the doctor. We got some blood work done just to make sure that everything was okay. And it came back that she has PCOS. So um, it is a hormonal imbalance. And it, the symptoms of that is anxiety and depression. So there were so many times when we're like, is something, do we need to change something we're doing at home? Do we need to do this differently? Does she need more attention? Like, I don't know, there's just so much stuff that goes into mental health and there's so many different ways that it can look and be from, but hers is from um, a chemical imbalance. And we are working, we should just got the diagnosis the other day. So we are still figuring it out, um, but she, has talked to a couple people who have it who've made her feel better about it. We had an amazing meeting with somebody. The we other had day. an amazing, amazing meeting mm -hmm. that Hallie felt so much better after. So that is what Hallie has. She's doing really good though. She's on a really good track and she um, still sees a therapist once a week and she loves that. And yeah, if she wants to go into more detail, she does want to go into more detail, um, but. I don't know when she'll do that. She keeps saying she's gonna do it, but we don't wanna like, we want it to be totally her and her wanting to make the video and her making the video. And if she chooses not to, then we just, we don't push it at all. So this one is from Amanda Schultz Giles. Love watching y'all have a great family. How is Aurora doing from her surgery? And you're all still planning to put her in speech therapy. She, it's like she never had therapy. She's as happy as can be. She's saying a lot more words, which is weird. There was one time where she's starting to be able to say words better and like names better. Sentences. She almost said, I think she said Jake's name. 
It was random. I was like, what she just did happened? Say Jake. Yeah. She calls it, him Shake, but it's but close. But it's close. I was like, before <laughs> before she couldn't even like try it, she would just say like she would just call everyone mom. <laughs> yeah, she me. calls everyone mom. Yeah. And so even me. Now that she's saying names, it was weird. I was like, huh? What just mm-hmm. happened? She mom, she said a word. She's smart. Mom, she said a we word. have started the search um, into getting her speech therapy in the valley. Um, we want to find the best speech therapist that we can. Somebody who know you know has worked with tongue tie um, and apraxia and, and apraxia all and all that. So yeah, she will be in speech therapy <clears throat> and she's doing really good from her surgery. Okay, let me switch over to YouTube because those questions were all from Facebook. For those of you watching this video, you guys are getting a couple little things into videos that we're doing up. So the the PCOS um, diagnosis is one of them, and here is another one that's a little sneak peek but um tia taylor is melinda going to change her name to Petta after adoption or just wait until she gets married are we actually answering this one right now wait can we i don't know Okay, so Melinda is changing her name to Pettit um, from the adoption. So it will be Melinda Lee Pettit. Lee is spelled L-E-I-G-H though on this one. Okay, Ella Fisher, do some of the kids have worse mental health than others? So I don't really feel like you could really say like one's worse than another. I feel like everybody's different and every mental health situation's different. Um, each of the kids have been through certain traumas and different things in their past, so there's certain triggers. But I wouldn't say one's worse than another or than the other. You know what I mean? Like you can't really. Everybody's going through something like different. That. Yeah, it's not comparable. Like, oh, mine's worse, yours is better. <laughs> I will say Everybody. one comment that really bothered me. So I usually don't ad- like address negative comments, but this comment kind of really like got to me, and I guess it made me feel really sad. So the comment was when Hallie was going through her mental health stuff and we were talking about it, someone had commented, I've always, I've been watching your channel. I've always wanted to adopt, but now that I found out Hallie has mental health things, I'm choosing not to adopt. And that comment made me so sad inside because A, mental health is something that you should never be ashamed of. You should never be ashamed to talk about it. It should never feel like someone's judging you because of it and also anybody can struggle with mental health it can be a bio kid it can be adopted it can be your brother or sister like it can be anybody and it could hit anybody at any time and so many people are afraid to speak up about it because they're like well a they're gonna feel judged or like postpartum depression for example like my husband's gonna feel like he can't you know help me enough or you're gonna feel like you're putting that burden and Hallie had a little bit where she was like I don't want to say something to my mom and dad because they're great parents and I don't want them to feel like they failed in any way but mental health is not about failing or somebody did something wrong or whatever there are certain cases where there is a major trauma that happens that can trigger depression so there is certain ones but in our particular case it wasn't anything like that and it actually had nothing to do with adoption or foster care or any of like our situation it just it was a chemical imbalance and even if it wasn't and it was something then you handle it as a family and you support that person and you guys get through it together so and how speak up about your mental health. Howie's biological, so it's not like she went through anything major. Yeah, so. it wasn't trauma induced, and it wasn't anything to do with adoption. And so it made me sad that someone was like, well, I'm not adopting because this person has a mental health and they have adopted siblings. Like, you can't compare things like that and say, I mean. Every family is different, so. Yeah. Just don't let mental health affect your foster or adoption journey. Just don't. Don't do it. From Panda Bear, can the children swim anytime or do you have a time that you allow it? Okay, so, so here are the, sorry. Oh no, go sorry. ahead, go ahead. Here are the rules. So first, <clears throat> if we do go swimming and, yeah, if we do go swimming, I think they said they're fine with whenever, you just have to have a partner. The little kids can't unless an older sibling is out there. Or we're watching or, them. Or they're watching them. Other than that, you have to have two people. There's no one person swimming. You always have to have a partner. And Aurora can only be out there if mom and dad are out. If mom and dad are out. So we believe in a buddy system. The older teens, like 
obviously he's 18, you know what I mean? They can go swimming, but they, yeah, have to have somebody with them. I told them, even though they know how to swim, it's important because you could fall and hit your head or something could happen. Don't swim by yourself. That you always need somebody with you. So they, yeah, can swim when they want, but Logan, Brody, and Aurora cannot swim when they want. And the good news is Crystal and I have decided to get a glass fence. Oh, a glass pull fence. Glass pull fence. We're just waiting for it to be installed and for them to get back What's with us. What's a glass pull fence? It's so cool. It's really it's cool. It's so cool. Actually, what made me think of it is one of your comments. One of you have made my backyard more beautiful. So instead of getting exactly. a wrought iron where it like, you know, messes with the vibe, it's just glass and clear. And you can't even tell there's a pull fence. Glass. What? And it's Someone's frameless. Gonna... Boom. Okay, well don't do that. I'm a little worried about that. <laughs> <laughs> Lizzo bet one, love you guys, but curious, how do you find time for everyone's needs like one-on-one -on -one time? So I know we get this question a lot and there's so many people that are like, oh my gosh, I only have three kids and I'm having a really hard time, you know, even being able to handle that. How do you, you know, handle this many? And so a couple of quick things, I love kids. I love spending time with them. When they're gone, I'm like- She's heartbroken. I'm like- She's literally so oh, sad. let's spend one-on-one -on -one time together. Like, we just find a way to make it work. And we make sure that everybody gets the love and attention that they need, that they deserve. Because every kid deserves to feel like the favorite. And so we really try to do that. The other thing is Aaron and I's jobs. I mean, we're our schedules are so flexible and that we have plenty of time that we can even drop our days of work and just go spend time together if that's what's needed. Yes. We're starting a parent, like starting a channel and we're gonna be talking about parenting on there and how we do it and what that looks like. And cause I know so many people are like, I can't even understand, you know, what that, how <clears throat> you can do that. It takes a lot of patience, let me tell you. They have <laughs> the best patience I've ever seen. <laughs> so the other thing with it, and I know like, this is probably not a good example, but I'm just gonna use it as an example. But I'm really bad at basketball. Like I, I don't, <laughs> I try so hard. I know I really try, I even watched some videos one time and really tried to like, <laughs> you know, get that shot, get that perfect shot. But I, I can never make it in the basket. Like I really can't. Okay, but anyways, that's besides the point. So, so Saying like, because I'm not good at basketball, I can't imagine how somebody can hit almost every shot that they shoot. And so that's kind of what I feel like this comparison is people are like, well, I can't imagine doing it, therefore it can't be true. And I feel like that's how it is. Like I know people are like, how do you handle and give all those kids love and attention? But I do. And I don't know, I, it's hard to explain she how we those, do it. Uh, Damian we hit the shot. clutch shot. Yeah, she hits the Damian Lillard clutch shot. All, All right, basketball practice starts Sometimes tomorrow. The other thing is openness. You know, if a kid feels like they're not getting enough attention, we are having open communication, and they can come to us and be like, hey, I'm needing some one-on-one -on -one attention. They're also okay, really, really good at telling. I can tell when one of the kids starts acting a little bit different. Yeah. I'm like, hey, let's go do this today, or let's, and then we can sit and have those conversations. And we've always taught our kids to be as open as possible. It took Alex a long time with communication. He was not his he skill. Still <laughs> he still struggles with it. He still struggles with communication. Let's be honest. But he's doing really good with it. And I think that we've always encouraged our kids to talk things through and to come to us if there is a problem or if they need something or yeah. Ashley Harold, what is everyone's favorite thing in the house? So we will do this as a group, but I am curious what's your favorite thing in the house? The pool and the court. Also the garage. A lot of space. And my room. I'm loving it. Great. They're great. And the house is great. It's hard to pick just one. And the view. And the <laughs> Mine is my own laundry room. It's the best thing I've ever had in my life. <laughs> I know you know you're a mom when you're like excited about a laundry room, but like it's really cool. Like I can go I can go and do my laundry anytime I want and the laundry room is clean and then I don't have to switch the laundry that's in there or the kids aren't like, hey do mine first. Like I can just do my laundry. And it's done. <laughs> The people before us were like, they, they knew what was they, going on. They knew. They knew. They knew, they knew. They knew what's Mine up. is the kitchen. Yours is the kitchen? The stove. We is cooked in their amazing. kitchen yesterday as like a big group. Had a lot of fun. Video incoming. <laughs> Maybe. And uh, yeah, 
It was just, all right, I love the kitchen. Okay, Jay Baby, do you guys have new rules or new way of doing chores in your new house? We are trying to figure that one out. Technically, they're not new rules, they're just different since the house is different, so. Then they are new. New is different. <coughs> oh. Oh, thanks, Mia. I got a fruit snack. It's funny. Okay, so. We are trying a different chore system now that we are in a new house. Um, I don't know if it's going to work out. We will let you know in the next couple weeks. We will show you or tell, do a whole video on our chore system and how what we're doing. Okay, Asia Tagar. Hi, I love your videos. You are such a lovely family. My question is, what has been the hardest part of leaving St. John's behind? Do you ever see yourself moving somewhere else or is this your forever home? I would like to think this is our forever home because I, the moving process, you know, we had a lot of help and we got it done quickly, but moving sucks. <laughs> okay, so to answer the second part of the question, yes, this is our forever house. We don't plan on moving ever again. But again, in a couple years, mom's going to be like, you know. this house. No, it's true. I got my own laundry room. I'm happy for life. <laughs> happy for life. We're good. We're I really good. could see you living in this house for 40, 50 years. Um, Forever. Well, for the St. John's thing, I think it was, since it was like a big part of our lives, like I graduated from there. So that, that definitely, I'm going to miss it a bit, but not too much. My the hardest part was, the weather was, of leaving St. John's was the weather for sure. So but the other hard part is like, I felt like there were so many memories in that house and I felt like we went into that house with our kids so little oh and then we gosh, left yes. with them all like teenagers and older and I feel like we left their little childhood behind. Like, I don't know, there's yeah. a part of me that I felt was, really sad. I was 15 when we moved there. Yeah, like I felt like 18. that was our childhood and now we're into like these teen young adulthood <laughs> ages and it's just a new chapter and it's different. I love it, but I, I do miss the little, little Alex with chubby cheeks. Oh my you know, gosh. I love that we were doing YouTube pretty much the entire time we were in our last house. So all of the great memories are, a lot of them are caught on film and, yes. and that stuff. So I do love that. we're going to make new memories here and it's going to be great too. It's just a new chapter. So welcome to the new chapter. New chapter. And thank you all for being a part of this. If you are not subscribed, Hit the subscribe button for the new chapter of our lives. It should be fun. We have weddings coming up, <laughs> babies, uh, I'm all kinds of fun oh. stuff. And we will see you guys tomorrow. Love Bye. you guys. Bye. Bye.